In this video I would like to show you very quickly how to design a thread. So in my other Katia V5 course that I have on uh, Udemy here, uh, a few people asked me how they can uh, design a thread and uh, I just told them that uh, they can use the helix. But right now I would like to show you a few ideas about how to design threads. And we are going to do this on a simple solid. So I'm not going to design a bolt or something like that because uh, I like to concentrate on how to position it and how to adjust it around the solid. And then after that you can uh, design it however you want it to be, like a bolt or something else. So usually a thread, first we need to think how a thread is built in reality. So in reality they take a piece of metal bar, like uh, this portion here, that you see here. And they use a special tool that you put it here at the end and you start to spin it and it will create a thread. So it doesn't matter how the tool is called or uh, how many type of tools there are because you can even create it with a lathe and you'll have a cutting knife that just goes into a direction and creates a thread. We like to concentrate on the idea that a thread is a cutting operation that occurs inside this metal bar and that continu in a continuous movement forward. So now let's start to design this. Let's open a new part. And let's make a bar like this, where we are going to create a thread. So we are not going to cut a thread in it, but we are going to build the thread on the bar. So the initial... So let's design a 6.1 millimeter diameter circle. And then let's make a pad. And let's make this 50 millimeters long. Let's give it a color. And here let's uh, have a plane. And make this at around 15 millimeters from the this part of the solid. And on this one, let's make a sketch. And uh, on this sketch, I'd like to project this edge for a second and make it into a construction element at the same time. And then position a point right on this edge so let's just make a point on this edge and on the horizontal axis let's make a coincidence here with this edge exit so now we have a point right here on this plane in fact let's also hide here the absolute axis So it will not show on a 3D mode. And this is the beginning of the helix. So for a helix we need a point and an axis. And let's, we also need an axis that runs right in the middle of this solid. And for that let's make a point with a zero origin everywhere. Because I like this point to go right in the middle of those planes. And from there let's make a point direction line. And this is going to be the axis because the helix doesn't want to pick the axis on the solid by itself. So we need to build a line. So we have a line and a point. And on a generative shape design. And this is the only command that we are going to use in this course from generative shape design. It's going to be the helix. We are not going to use something else. So the helix it's on this toolbar called curves. It's the second command here, helix. And it needs a starting point and an axis. This is the point and this is the axis. So you see we already have this uh, staircase spiral, this curve. And we need to input parameters. The parameters for a helix are pitch and length or height. There are also parameters but we are not going to work with those now. So the pitch for a standard thread it's one point to 5 millimeters. So basically the pitch is the distance between the revolutions. And as a height, let's make this maybe 40 millimeters. This is too long. Let's make this 35. Okay. So let's make this 33. So we have the helix. And this is uh, what we need for the thread. Now we can stay in part design. 
and in here I will need to design the profile of the thread. So this can be done in two ways as uh, when we have this helix here. One of them will be to design the profile on the inside and cut it or design on the outside or build it. So here we are going to design it on the outside. So let's uh, project those edges here. I'm going to click on this and project those canonical edges. Okay. And uh, just delete this one at the bottom. And in here, let's make uh, the profile like this. And let's add a few constraints. I would like to make a constraint between this top and those two endpoints. And make this an equidistant point. The height of this. Let's make this one millimeter. Let's trim this line here and here. And let's add the measurement between those two points. The base here. And this one should be smaller than the pitch because there is a distance between each thread profile if you watch one other thread, but it's very small. So there is a lot of science between thread, but we are not going to do the science here. We are just going to touch a few things to make sure that this is designed close to the reality. So instead of 1.25, we are going to make 1.25. So we uh, leave out 0 0.05 on each end. So it's going to be 0 0.1 in between them. Okay. And we also need the dimension between this one. And uh, we are going to take this point here. So this one has to be 0 0.6. So now all the sketch is constrained. So if we go out, if we exit the sketch, this is what uh, we should get. And if we take the rib command, choose the profile, the center curve is the helix. So if we click preview, you see that um, the profile keeps spinning around the helix somehow. So we need to control the profile and from here we can either choose pulling direction and choose this uh, axis or we can do reference surface and choose this surface and so if we click preview we see that now it's okay so now let's go back into this profile and we need to do a small cut here at the top we need to cut this top so let's trim those and those I like to put those lines back here and make those construction elements. I like to make a distance. I want to make sure that uh, those lines intersect with this initial point, all of them. So everything has to intersect in this point. So this, uh, so now this will be ISO constrained. And we take 0 0.2 from the top of this triangle. Exit. And this is how we want uh, this to be. So if you go on this page on uh, Wikipedia, ISO metric screw thread, and uh, there is a lot of science here about uh, threads, so you can uh, read this if you don't know. And this is how a thread is constructed, should be constructed. So you see that uh, top of the thread it's usually cut off so this is how the tools work there are a lot of relationship between different dimensions of the thread so you see p means pitch and uh, the h is just the total height of uh, this thread so what we designed here it can be modified with uh, all of those parameters if you want and now we need to do one last thing so i'm going to create a sketch on this plane so to be able to see this, I'll go to view render style parallel because I want to see this in a parallel way, not perspective. And let's project this edge. So I want to be this 
to be projected as a perfect circle. It depends on what you click around here. And if you create a pad, reverse direction, bring this up, and you just want to go over the thread just a little, just a few millimeters with this pad. So this is how you can design this. So here you can do, if you want to make this a bolt, you can do here the hex head. And here, if we modify this helix and make it a little longer, so if we make 34 millimeters and even 35, so you see it gets to the end of the solid. Let's see how it works. And this is what we get. Here we can design a plane. Give this a few millimeters from the end, and we can use the split tool to cut it. So we are going to get something like this. And now if you make a sketch on one of the lateral planes, in here I need to project a few lines. And also make those construction elements, all of them. And if I make a line like this, so this is not a construction element, I put an angle between this line and this vertical edge here. And it has to be 45 degrees. So this is a chamfer. And from this point, I would like to control the length of the chamfer like this. Let's try a 1 millimeter chamfer here, or uh, in fact, let's see 0 0.5, how it looks, like this. And we will have to close this as a sketch. Also, let's add dimensions here, just to make this size a constraint. Keep those one here, and one here, it's okay. Exit and let's make a groove. Choose this sketch and axis. We can use this uh, axis here. So if we click OK, now we have also a chamfer. So let's see 30, million, 30 degrees how this looks. So 30 degrees might, might be better. And instead of 0 0.5, if we use 1. Instead, let's try 45 degrees with 1 millimeter, which is like a standard chamfer. See how it looks. Also, this looks way better. Almost looks like a normal ball. So, this is a design with the thread designed on a solid. Then we have uh, the other design where we cut the thread inside the solid so let's save this one so i just saved the copy of this one just to have it so i'm going to delete everything here one by one until i get to the rib so if i delete the groove delete aggregated elements means that it's going to delete the sketch of the groove so okay the split delete the split we delete the plane pad let's delete the pad the aggregated elements means the sketch and I want to delete the rib, but I don't want to delete the sketch of the rib. So I'm going to keep the sketch. So you see it's right here. So first, let's make this 8 millimeter thickness. So let's say we have an 8 millimeter bar. And we are going to use a tool and cut a thread into it. And this is the sketch. So if I go inside the sketch, I just need to move this sketch on the other side of this line. And the easy way to do this, let's just select those three lines, mirror, we select this line, and those ones we transform them into construction elements. So we can control all those dimensions by here, and I'm going to leave 
the same dimensions and exit. So now instead of rib, we are going to use slot, profile, and uh, helix. So first of all, let's go into this helix and uh, get back one millimeter here. So let's use the slot, profile, sketch, and helix as a central curve. And we need to do the same here, profile control. Uh, let's use pulling direction and let's use this axis. Click preview, okay. So now this is uh, different, so this is cut in here. But then here at the end, you need to make it more realistic. So let's uh, try to do that with the helix. And instead of 34, let's try 34.5. Let's just see how it looks. I'll make sure I'm in uh, parallel mode. Yes. So 34.5 on the helix. Okay. And it goes a little uh, further. Let's do 35. So the problem with the uh, commands in Gatia where you remove material is that um, you cannot go outside the solid because it will give those kind of errors. So the best way would be to have very close to the edge, like 34.5. And then we use a plane where we can just use the split. So let's make, a, let's make two millimeters. Let's make a split. We use this plane. We keep this side. Click OK. So we we need to do this and then we need to do the chamfer that we did before and uh, we use the groove command to cut this chamfer so this is the easiest way if you really want to design a thread and of course all of those planes and everything has to be adjusted according to the parameters of the thread also the profile doesn't really have to be triangle it can be any shape it depends on the shape of the thread and you can imagine that uh, if you'll have a knot for this thread you do the reverse thing on the knot with the exact same parameters and uh, they will fit together those threads will fit together so those are a few ideas about how you can design threads in katia v5 as you can see there are a few methods to design it usually if you work on big projects in companies when you design bolts you don't design the threads because this uh, helix and uh, everything we had here for uh, this thread that puts a lot of pressure on computers so bolts are very commonly used in a big project so you can have a project with 1000 bolts so you'll have 1000 helixes and when you open a big project with many bolts that uh, will cause the computer to crash will cause the katia to crash so in companies you will not see threads designed on bolts or any other details but you will uh, probably see a thread design on a special kind of part that has a special kind of thread so it's better to concentrate on uh, all type of threads not only on uh, standard threads so i hope you enjoyed this and see you in the next video